Hey, how's it going? We are in Luke chapter 13, this time verses 31 through 35. At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must keep going today and tomorrow and the next day, for surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So, apparently, some Pharisees were friends of Jesus. So, we see here the first verse we read, verse 31. Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. So, if they're warning Jesus about Herod, you know, like, King Herod wants to take you out, so you need to go hide. You need to get out of here for a while. And Jesus, of course, had a lot of run-ins with the Pharisees. There were lots of difficulties that they had between each other. But here we see clearly some Pharisees are warning Jesus. They care about Jesus. They want to help him out. So, uh, you know, sometimes we can have some tensions, but we can also have a connection with people that we have tension with as well. And here we clearly see some Pharisees came to Jesus. They, they were his friends. They wanted to help him out. But Jesus uh, is not, he, you know, he's not like, oh no, I better get out of here. Instead, he's like, go tell that fox, which according to my little footnote here, is uh, not, it's kind of like a dismiss, dismissive term in the Hebrew culture of the day. You know, calling somebody a fox, like, nah, go tell that insignificant person, um, you know, I will drive out demons and heal people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. So this seems to be a very clear uh, reference to the crucifixion and the resurrection, how Jesus will, uh, you know, on the third day be raised to life. It's sure what it seems like to me. Uh, so what it seems like then also is that Jesus is not running away from the cross. He's like, okay, Herod wants to kill me. Okay, you know, I'm going to... On the third day, I'm going to reach my goal. You know, to me, that it just indicating that he's not running away. He's not wanting to uh, run from God's plan for his life, even though he knows it's going to be difficult. And even though Herod is going to cause him some some real problems, that's going to be part of the the why Jesus is crucified. So the last part here kind of shows the heart of God towards people who refuse him. So, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. So, you know, that's the heart of God. And we see the same thing in 2 Peter uh, 3, 9, where this is talking about the second coming of Christ, which they were expecting to be very, very quickly. And... You know, even though Jesus said it's going to be a long time, uh, they thought, oh, it's today, right? And if it wasn't today, oh, it's tomorrow, right? And that wasn't happening. So that's what Peter's talking about here. He says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So the Lord does not want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to come to repentance. And that's the heart of God. Um, however, he's not going to override a person's will. You know, from that verse 34, again, you know, want to gather you together like a hen gathers her chicks, but you were not willing. So the not willing was not overridden by God. The will of God to gather them together, um, to have none perish, can be overridden by people's will. And, you know, they were just not willing. They would not submit to God's will. So then, you know, they didn't get the benefit. Um, so let's pray to be willing to love God, 
um, to trust God, to serve God, to know God. Um, but we've got to be willing. When we're willing, then we can grab hold of all the good things that the Lord has for us. So let's pray along those lines. Heavenly Father, help us to not be stubborn or obstinate or rebellious against you, but help us to have faith in you, believing that you are good, that your ways are good, that when we are obedient to what your scriptures have to say, that we're doing the right thing and that we can connect with your uh, your wisdom and your beauty and your strength. Lord, help us to do that. Help us to trust in you, to live by faith, to walk in your ways, to love you back as much as, as we can, Lord, help our hearts to open up to you. Help us to serve you and walk in your ways. Lord, we want to be willing. So we submit our hearts to you. And Lord, show us when we're wrong. Help us to have a heart for you and to walk in your ways, knowing that you are good and you will help us grab hold of the best things this life and everlasting life have to offer. So we trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.